Okay, now we're going to hide up a package of bees in this top bar hive. That's the queen cage. Eventually I'm going to leave it right there about one foot from the entrance end of the hive. Here are the bees, three pound package, and I'm going to pour them in about a foot from the entrance end of the hive right there. First I'm going to wet them down with some sugar water so they won't fly out of the hive too rapidly. The mic on this first package installation fails so I'm doing a voiceover. Also the hive is turned towards the the um, floor, the entrance of my bee house so the light, the sunlight can get in it. Here come the bees. You want to shake them in real rapidly, about 10 seconds or so. Get them in quick so most of the bees stay in the hive. So now they're in. Now I'm going to take the queen cage and dip it into that mass of bees. The bees are moving a little bit slow because it's cool this morning. Plus I wetted them down a little bit extra so they would move slow for the camera. Usually this dipping is real quick. You want some bees on the queen cage so they can start scenting and guide the other bees to the queen cage. So there's the queen cage with the bees on it. Now I'm bringing up some more top bars to enclose the hive and the automatic focus needs to track that. It'll catch up in a minute. There it goes. The focus has to do a lot of work because this is a long hive and I'm working up and down. It's a five foot long hive. So you can see the bees starting to move up. And to help them I'm going to take my hive tool and gently spread them out a little bit. Notice I'm working without gloves, veil, or a bee suit, and I've been doing this for over 40 years. If you're new to beekeeping, you need all the protection. I do have a smoker, but I'm not going to smoke them because they don't need any smoke. But I do have a lit smoker nearby. Now I get them all spread out so they can start crawling up. They've got to crawl up the sides of the hive and across those foundation strips and cluster around the queen cage. Now here comes some more foundation strips to enclose the hive. Brush in some stragglers. If you know how to handle bees, they won't sting you. But I've been doing this for over 40 years. Some more top bars. A few more. Now they're not going to use all those top bars and combs and foundation strips too quickly so I'm going to use just a flat piece of plywood to finish enclosing the hive right there because I, I need top bars for other hives. I thought I was going to need that rag right there but it turns out I don't need it. So most all the bees are in the hive and now I'm going to put some top bars or just some blank top bars at the very end of the hive underneath the camera. Okay, so now working from the entrance end, I'm going to even up the top bars. And now I'm checking for leaks, any cracks between the top bars. And there's actually right where I pointed right there, there's a little corner knocked out of that piece of plywood. Now the bees can actually start coming out of the side of the hive and they'll learn that little hole is a side entrance and you don't want that. You don't want any leaks from the sides of the hive. You want them to learn only the entrances at the end of the hive, which I have my six entrances are plugged up except for one down there as I describe in the book that you can learn about on my web page. So duct tape up that little open corner on that piece of plywood so there won't be any leaks. Now that's sealed up and there are no other cracks. I'm checking the sponges at the entrance in. I put little sponges in the entrances to block them up. And now I'm going to put a piece of duct tape over the top bars at the close end of the, of the hive underneath the camera. That's just to make sure there's no cracks on the last two top bars between them. 
and now we're done. Check the hive in about three hours to make sure they're clustering around the queen. For more information, see my book.